Chase from Ayton. DiVincenzo's ahead of everyone. Okogi's trying to track him down. He'll take it down. Kind of slow his body down. Well, I know this isn't the team, but oh my gracious. Bear down. I see you. I see you. I agree with Don. The Golden State Warriors crush the Phoenix Suns at Chase Center. Despite the absence of one of the league's top wing defenders in Andrew Wiggins, the Golden State Warriors continue to dominate teams at home, disposing of the Suns 123-112. The dubs on the back of a 38-point explosion from Klay Thompson, who had 8 threes for a total of 33 points in just the first half, came away with the well-needed win. The Phoenix Suns, however, were notably without former Warriors superstar Kevin Durant. Hey, what's happening everyone? This is Swish. If you've been watching my videos and enjoy the content, be sure to like the video, hit that subscribe button, and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of my latest uploads. Let's see if we can get to 30k subs before the end of the season. Durant, who recently went down with an injury after rolling his ankle during warmups, has yet to make his debut back in Chase Center since he went down versus the Raptors in the 2019 NBA Finals. That's four years it's been and here we are, about to go another year with no Durant return. A rare off the bench performance from Jordan Poole came up clutch for the Warriors, hitting big shots at the end of the game to help the Warriors close out and stymie the Suns late game run. I suppose the big question is, how do the Warriors look at this point in the season? Did we see anything that might be a problem for the team going forward? Namely, how the team performed on defense. Today's video will cover just that, the team's potential if the Warriors manage to get fully healthy for the playoffs as well as what could happen if they don't. So without further delay, let's get to it. Considering the team was missing three of their top five defenders in Wiggins, Kaminga, Gary Payton II, it's really tough to gauge the performance versus the Suns as it relates to a fully healthy squad. Just for perspective, the Warriors could legitimately run a lineup that includes Dante DiVincenzo, Gary Payton II, Andrew Wiggins, Jonathan Kaminga, and Draymond Green. As a matter of fact, if we were to get all of our guys back fully healthy, this is a lineup I know Steve Kerr would be dying to utilize. This group would be a nightmare lineup for any opposing team. Truthfully, the Warriors have the best group of defensive players in any conference. Take for example Rudy Gobert. Last year, Gobert led the league with the lowest points scored per 100 possessions of players that logged at least 2,000 minutes. The winner of last year's Defensive Player of the Year award, Marcus Smart, had a rating of 107.1. Gary Payton, by comparison, had a defensive rating of 102.6, who was tied with Draymond Green. Jonathan Kaminga was at 107.6, ahead of Andrew Wiggins, who was at 108.2. And Dante wasn't with Golden State last year, but managed to maintain a 114 defensive rating when healthy. We just want to be careful when evaluating these defensive rating numbers. A higher number, while seeming less effective, may in fact mean that the player is guarding the opposing team's best player. I don't need to reiterate that this continues to be a weakness for Golden State as it has been all year. Last year, teams struggled to score more than 100 points against the Warriors. In at least 25 games, the opposing team found it impossible to do so. This year, there have been three games where the opponent failed to score over 100 points in such matchups, with two of those games coming in March. That means, prior to March, there was only one game where the opposing team scored less than 100 points against the Warriors. Fundamentally, nothing has changed for the team in the Suns game. The Warriors have a 109.9 defensive rating at home this season and a 120.8 defensive rating on the road. The Suns, without KD, were still able to put up 112 points, while the Warriors ran a box and won defense on Devin Booker. It's obvious the team will still require the reinforcement that would be provided by Wiggins and Payton II. When healthy, the Warriors starting lineup is still the best 5-man lineup in the league, so the best they can do is hope to be healthy and work towards that end. The end of the season is fast approaching and in just over a month, we'll have seen the last regular season game played. The Warriors have just 13 matchups remaining, 8 of which will be on the road.
With the Warriors currently just three wins over 500 and a spotty road record, you can see how this could pose a problem. If the team can't manage to win on the road consistently, not only will they struggle in the playoffs, they may even have trouble getting there. The Warriors are currently tied for fifth with the Clippers and fighting feverishly to avoid the play-in tournament. They currently sit one game ahead of the Timberwolves who would have to defend their seventh spot against the Mavericks if the playoffs were to be held today. As it stands, the West is still wide open from the 4th through the 13th seed. While the Blazers in 13th likely won't get anywhere near the 4th seed, they're still only two games out of the play-in. As bad as things have been for the Warriors this year, however, there's been a stroke of good luck. While I don't consider this to be good in the usual sense, considering how the Warriors benefited, it's not a situation that was in anyone else's control. The Bucks were down Giannis, the Suns were down Kevin Durant, John Morant is out of commission, and currently both Doncic and Irving are sitting for Dallas. While the Dubs likely won't catch up to the 41-win Grizzlies, they do face them as well as the Dallas Mavericks on the road over the next few games. Both games favor the Warriors, even though Luka will likely return. Kyrie might return as well, but there is no definite timetable as he's questionable day to day. Not only should the Warriors be able to pull out a couple of wins on the road, they'll need them if they hope to keep anyone from the 6th to 14th from sneaking up and forcing the Warriors into a playing tournament, or worse, out of the playoffs altogether. Along with the defensive woes of the Golden State Warriors, there have also been the Jordan Poole incidents for which he's faced no shortage of scrutiny. When he gets in the zone like he did against the Suns, it does wonders for the team. This is the type of late game execution they're Over looking for from Jordan Poole. Is this isn't the first time I've said that Poole is truly a go get me a bucket type of player. Once he slows down and lets the game come to him, he becomes much more effective and dare I say lethal. When teams have to account for a third player in the Warriors offense that will duplicate the production of Steph Curry or Klay Thompson on any given night, this frees up these Splash Brothers to be able to do what they do best under much less pressure. When Poole plays like he did against the Suns, he's the perfect sixth man to come in and take over. Kerr only needs to inject a supply of defense into the second unit to help support his efforts, otherwise the Doves would be trading buckets. For a must-win game where the Warriors are behind, this would be far from ideal. What would truly complement Poole's game, however, is a big man that'll provide vertical spacing and a lob threat to allow Poole penetration in the paint. Essentially a Montrose Harrell, Lou Williams type of combo that would come in and wreak absolute havoc. I think the Warriors are one decent athletic 7 footer away from really utilizing and getting the best out of the team's second unit. Kerr seems to prefer Kaminga as the 5 for the second unit, but at the same time, Kaminga mostly serves as a playmaker, cutter, and spot up shooter in the corner. He has a very limited role, but every now and then you'll see him reach in his bag for one of those mid-range jumpers. If Poole and Kaminga can maximize their chemistry, they could certainly give teams fits with incredible offensive potency without giving up anything defensively. This is where the importance of health comes in as the Warriors have those perimeter guards that could take some of the load off Kaminga. This will free him up to attack and take advantage of the inevitable mismatches he'll most definitely find on offense. For now, however, Kaminga will remain sidelined as a day-by-day -day situation until he returns from injuring his ankle, which he seemed to have done the same way Kevin Durant did. Gary Payton II would be next to watch for his return. His last evaluation was done just before the Suns game and it came back positive as Payton is doing on-court workouts, aka shooting. The team said he'll be reevaluated in another 10 days. The question mark on the roster is Andrew Wiggins, whose return isn't up to the team at this point. And as Poole said, when he's ready, he'll return. Let me know if you guys think the Warriors can make the playoffs without Gary Payton and Andrew Wiggins available to play. Leave your comments down below and thanks for watching. Till next time, swish.